what would sell? I mean, there's so many offerings out there, but there's nothing standing out in terms of data services. They talk about wireless data, but wireless data offerings at this point are not up to the mark. There are a lot of complaints from consumers. So in your opinion, what would sell with small screens and, of, of course, uh, broadband data? Um, I think many, many things will sell uh, if you offer them at the right time with the right price and the right engagement. I think that's where it matters. You can have a great product, uh, but it can still fail. So you've got to find a way of, of understanding your need and then we deliver on that in a, making your life easy. And I think uh, the formula in between there is, is what you've got to get right. Uh, and then you will also so it boils back to what the people want. Yeah. I mean, Putting your ears to the consumer. You, we have seen things being put out in the market, uh, pushed out to the market and not taking off. It's more a technology push. And some of, that things, some of those things don't take off. Maybe one, one, once in a while something do take off. We didn't expect SMS to be such a huge success as it was. It didn't start out with a consumer push. Nobody expected that. No, they started like a, a technology push. <laughs> So you've got to find the balance there, believing in, in the consumers, but also daring to push out a few things that you, you believe in. With the economic slowdown, if voice data is on the downtrend and uh, SMS may be on the downtrend, would, would there really be people going and rushing to go into data packages? Yes, I believe so, because uh, we are s still in a very immature stage of, of the data usage, uh, or broadband usage if you want, in, in uh, Malaysia. There's a big pent-up demand, which uh, we all uh, should take seriously as an industry player and make sure that we deliver on that gap uh, of the consumer expectations. There you have a clear uh, expectation that we're not delivering on as an industry. Hopefully we can do our part uh, in, and excite the consumers and businesses around that when we, when we go to market. When do you go to market? Soon. Uh, How, what is soon? No, we have said that early Q1 or Q1, we, we target a, some kind of a launch uh, around the uh, 3G slash broadband uh, offerings. But uh, I use a favorite slogan of mine, it's worth waiting for. The Carlsberg slogan, I think it's, it's good to use here as well. It's worth waiting for. I, I would like to know, uh, you know, when you say worth waiting for, what are you trying to tell us? What I'm t trying to tell you as a consumer? Yeah, as a consumer. If you want me to wait as a consumer, can you give me a peek into what can I expect instead of me signing up with other operators? Yeah, I think you should expect uh, what the Digi brand stands for. Uh, the Digi brand stands for uh, delivering on a few things. One is best value. We want to deliver the best value for you. And we want to make it in a simple way. We want to give it easy to use. And it, sh it shouldn't be complicated. It should be easy for you to use our services. Those are core promises and beliefs from DJ, and that's in the DJ brand. And that's why we have seen such a fantastic growth over the past. We're delivering on that. We should not fail on that also for, for new services that we're launching. Uh, so that's an expectation you should have as a consumer or a business uh, customer to, to us. Um, and that's also the feedback we're getting. Uh, people are um, signing up, lining up and waiting for, uh, for our services to come out uh, and hopefully we will not disappoint people. Uh, but again, it's a big pressure on us to deliver. Uh, but that's also what drives us forward. Uh, the pressure to not disappoint uh, and the pressure to, uh, to, to uh, over exceed on your expectations. Can't you do it early? We, we could. Uh, we could do it earlier, but we don't want to fail on our expectations and your expectations. So I'd rather launch something that actually meets your expectations or exceeds your expectations, rather than rush with something that disappoints you. Um, but yes, we could rush it, but we're not going to do it. So you're talking about end of uh, first quarter? We have said Q1, uh, not to be too specific for many reasons, uh, competitive reasons and uh, also, uh, we want to save some surprises for you, both for media and for customers. When you talked about uh, slowdown, expected slowdown, would it, have a, would it have an impact on your earnings? Uh, that's factored into our current guidance, and we do believe that it's going to be a pressure on margins. We have said um, 
uh, that this year we're in in the mid 40s. Uh, that's going to be a challenge to meet uh, next year, but we have guided around that. Um, we're also guiding on the on the revenue growth in the high single digit for next year, uh, which is um, a stretch, uh, but that's where we believe we'll end up in the current market dynamics. But again. If the slowdown now is even more dramatic than before, we'll have to review that as we go along. But right now, we have no reason to, to re-guide or re-estimate next year. Your third quarter is out. What's a peak into the fourth quarter? The fourth quarter is no peak into. <laughs> we, uh, generally, we have said we were on track. Uh, otherwise, we would have had a profit warning or something, but we haven't had that. So we guide uh, and then we move along and then we re re um, uh, release our results um, and um, so far uh, it's been according to our guidance. That data revenues is what percentage of your total earnings now? Uh, we, we classify data revenues as SMS and other data advanced data So non-voice? Non-voice is okay. uh, still around 20%. 20% so and I mean with 3G coming first quarter, what do you expect six months from now? Your should go up. up to what level? What, what would be ideal? No, I don't want to set a target for the data revenues as a percentage because we also want to grow our other revenues. So we shouldn't uh, be disappointed if our data revenues grow as well as our uh, voice revenues. And therefore, I don't like a, a, a ratio in between. But we have absolute targets for our data revenues to grow, which I won't go into detail about. But of course, we want to grow our data revenues um, at a faster pace uh, than, than before with the help of the, the uh, investments we're doing. We're investing over a billion ringgit next year uh, in both um, in new services and, and the existing services. Uh, and of course that has to be uh, a payback on those investments and part of that will come uh, through higher data usage. And this, this figure you have already announced it before, yeah, right? It's and one, I think to be precise, our guidance is 1.1 .1 to 1.3 billion ringgit uh, in that range for next year. Um, and that's coming from which internal funds, borrowings, where is it going to come from? Well, so far we have been internally generating uh, our own cash flow uh, for investments and uh, we, um, uh, for next year we are uh, also trying to get to a position where we get a little bit better optimal capital structure and when I say that I mean we could use some debt uh, in order to uh, get a better uh, ratio on the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when we announced a special dividend here in Q3, uh, 78 cents, that is uh, part of our story to get to a balance sheet that looks better from an optimal uh, capital perspective. So with that we also will then uh, go into a debt situation uh, during next year. When, when ne next year are you looking at? It depends when we do the uh, payout for the special dividend, which is not announced yet, uh, and how fast we uh, uh, deliver on our, our rollout plans. Mm -hmm. but it, it's so so this, this debt is going to be for a special dividend? No, we, do, we don't earmark uh, the debt as such, but uh, we, we need debt. Uh, we need the, sorry, the 1.1 to 1.3 billion is capex, it's capex. for next, right, yes. next year, yes. for existing and new business. Uh, business. Yes. So out of the 1.1, it, it is just capex, it's not the special dividend. Special no. dividend is coming yes. from whatever yes. funds you have. Yes. What's your cash at this point? Well, our cash balance at Q3, uh, I don't have top of mind, but it, it's still uh, it's been ge positive generating cash every every quarter. Uh, there's going to be a special dividend. Yes. When exactly is that? It's not you, announced you've already, when. You've announced already given 78 cents uh, to be paid out. Uh, so you have already announced that? Yes, yeah, 78 right. cents. So is this is existing that you have announced. Is that going to be a sp uh, this dividend is going to be paid out early next year? It, it's the timing is not announced, but it's going to be sooner than I mean half yearly payment. So uh, we're announcing the X date for that soon. Assuming this is like early next year, by the time you actually get it, it will be like February next year. It's going to be within the next few months, yeah. Okay, is there going to be another one next year? Next year. You no, know, special dividends is never a part of a plan. Uh, that's why they call special dividends. Uh, but uh, we have a, our annual or our, our recurrent uh, dividend policy, which is at least 50% of, uh, of our earnings. Uh, in the past, we have over-delivered on that due to our strong performance. We have paid out over 4 billion ringgit over the past three and a half years, including this year's special dividend. 
Uh, and we continue including this this current including this um, announced one in Q3. Mm. This is the first special dividend or? No, we have announced two previously. This is the third one. This is the third one if I get it right, yeah. So 4 billion over 3.5 years. Mm. Special dividend, a special dividend, not no both special and ordinary. Another special dividend, not possible next year. Well, as I said, we we are heading towards an optimal capital structure uh, over the two two years, and that was uh, our previous objective to get there. Uh, I don't think we're going to rush to uh, to uh, leverage up our balance sheet in these days, because we also need to be monitoring the, the financial markets. So at this point of time, I'm happy that we haven't rushed into a, a highly leveraged position. Uh, and therefore, uh, taking step by step has been a very wise decision uh, from us so far. And there's no reason to speed it up. But at the same time, it's no, no reason to sit on a pile of cash either. So we've got to find that uh, good balance between shareholder value and then the risk management of, of our cash flow.